Hello, peoples, and welcome to Esoterica Cinema, the podcast where we take films from the cinematic multiverse and discuss the hell out of them. Today, I am coming at you with another patented five minute review. I got five on it. This week's film is Come True, released in 2020, shot, edited, written, and directed. All by the same guy, a gentleman by the name of Anthony Scott Burns. He's Mr. Burns! I'm Mr. Burns! He's Monty Burns! I'm Mr. Burns! Now, he's a Canadian dude who was a special effects supervisor on a number of indie films and has since parlayed that into a directing career. So, definitely interested to see where his career goes. Don't know that he's quite where he needs to be yet, but he shows a lot of promise. Now, the film also stars an actress by the name of Julia Sarah Stone. I had not seen her in anything prior to this film, and she was very good, so I am also interested to see where she goes as well. IMDb has this as follows. A teenage runaway takes part in a sleep study that becomes a nightmarish descent into the depths of her mind and a frightening examination of the power of dreams. Now, this is a slow-paced sci-fi horror film, right? It wants to be very psychologically complex, and I will admit that it starts off very promising. I liked a lot of what the film had to sell from the onset. I thought it had a very nice overall aesthetic, especially with regards to the visuals. I loved the score that it established early on. And in particular, it has these sort of dream sequences that it cuts to. They're very sort of brief, but in essence, they're really just artistic images and representations of the subconscious, but a very sort of dark element of the subconscious, right? And so it's got this haunted imagery that really, really works when it's combined with this haunting music as well. Now, unfortunately, as for the film itself, it is kind of a case of diminishing returns. The story progresses, but it really doesn't evolve from the standpoint of this action leads to this action leads to this action, and we've got a protagonist in search of a compelling MacGuffin. It's kind of one of those movies where things just sort of happen until they don't. And when I say they don't, Things will continue to happen until the end of the movie, but they won't make sense by the end of it. And then it kind of pulls off what I would say is a sort of cheap device to try to explain all of that away. And that was really largely what didn't work for me. Whatever, you'll pay to go see it. F*** you. On these five-minute reviews, we are making sure that they're spoiler-free, so I'm not going to go into what those elements are. But suffice to say, if you do check it out, uh, we'll invite you at the end to go ahead and leave your opinion on the Esoterica Cinema Hotline and give you that number. All you gotta do is pick up the phone and make the call. Why are you making it complicated? I do think the filmmaker sort of lost the overall direction. I don't know if he's what we would refer to as a pantser. Now, for those who don't know, this is sort of a screenwriting term, and screenwriters tend to fall into one of two camps. Either they are a plotter, which means that they sit down ahead of time and they plot their first, second, third act, or they can be what's referred to as a pantser. Now, the most famous and successful pantser would probably be Charlie Kaufman. And these are writers that don't necessarily know what they're going to write about. They just open up a blank page and look at it and see where their writing takes them. And the advantages of this are that you can go to some really unique places. The disadvantage is that you can often get stuck. And indeed, this very concept was examined in the film adaptation that Charlie Kaufman wrote. Which, hey, look at that. We also reviewed in season one. So you can go back and listen to that. Our very first episode, we reviewed that along with Aguirre. Man, talk about a trip down memory lane. Now, the film does have some what I would call unnecessary sex and violence. And I think it kind of just throws that in there to kind of maybe spicing things up a little bit. I don't think spicing is a word either, but it really should be. It's a perfectly cromulent word. Now, look, you if you listen to the show, you know that I'm certainly no prude. I have no problem with sex and violence, but justify it or make sure that it's at least very compelling, right? And I don't think the film really did a good job of attaching either of those qualities to their sex and violence. It kind of just felt a little ham-fisted, just kind of worked in there to a degree. And then as far as the final reveal is concerned, I would say that it was groan-inducing, but by then I had lost interest, so I wasn't really going to groan because I was kind of just ready for us to get out there. Change the channel, Marge! I, I can't say. It really lost me by the beginning of the third act, late in the second, is really when it lost me. Part of it, too, is it's a slow film. 
This film is not in a rush to go anywhere. It's very slow. It plods along. And in my opinion, I don't think it has enough meat on that bone to justify taking its time like that. But that's not to say that there wasn't some good in the film, right? I think the overall aesthetic was very interesting. I loved the dream sequences, even though they didn't really lend themselves to the story itself. They were just kind of interesting to look at and exist within for a bit. I do think the actress was wonderful. I think she gave a great performance. I can see her playing a number of different characters with different personalities. She does have a very youthful vibe that she gives off, so she would probably have to play younger characters at this point in her career, but I could definitely see her going somewhere. I also really loved the music, which, as I mentioned before, was written by the filmmaker as well. And so this, look, this guy wrote, shot, did the music, edited, did everything, right? Bravo. Hats off to you, sir. All the credit in the world for that. And you've got a lot of good in this film. That's what I would say to you, Mr. Anthony Scott Burns. <laughs> Gonna go ahead and give you my three adjectives for come true. Visually striking, unmotivated, and unfortunately, boring. The biggest sin of all, it was just kind of a boring film. By the second half, I was completely tapped out. All of this amounting to a star rating of just two and a half out of five stars for come true. So... Did not love this one, but look, maybe you did, and maybe you saw something in this film that I didn't. If so, I would love to hear from you, and I would love for you to call the Esoterica Cinema hotline and leave me a message letting me know what I missed. That number, 818-483-6285, and if you leave a message, I will go ahead and get you on the air on one of our episodes. In the meantime, if you do want to go check this film out for yourself, it is streaming on Hulu and would be part of your subscription. Otherwise, it can be found wherever you get your streaming films. And that wraps up another episode of Esoterica Cinema. Do join us for one of our long-form episodes or short-form episodes, and we will see you then. Thanks so much for listening.